Hey, Julian, who we get on tonight? Ah, now tonight we've got someone who would tell Genghis Khan how to improve his management skills. That could only be Hannah Perrin. It is. Let's get her in. Brilliant. Hi, I'm Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Ho. Welcome to Veterinary Ramblings. We interrupt the show for an important announcement. Hi there, dedicated listeners. We just wanted to take a little time outside of the show as we've got something very exciting to share with you. We have exclusive Veterinary Ramblings merchandise available now, including T-shirts, mugs, posters and prints. Now, personally, I think my favourite is our T-shirt with a hilarious diagram of cat anatomy, yep. which has been revised to include their sandpaper tongue and treat detecting ears. And essential for all veterinary students. If you would like to show your support for the show, head over to veterinaryramblings.com and select either the merch button for a one-off purchase through our T-Mill store or select become a patron. I'm sure you'll be absolutely chuffed to know that everything on our T-Mill store is fully sustainable, carbon neutral and shipped in plastic-free packaging. By making a one-off purchase, you will help us to plant more trees save water and reduce carbon emissions. If you want to further support us, become a Patreon and receive items you cannot get through one-off purchasing. A shout out on the show and exclusive Veterinary Ramblings content. Every single purchase made will really help us keep on interviewing amazing guests. But if nothing else, we do appreciate you tuning in. Now. Now. On on with the the show. show. So, right, here we go. Okay. Boom. Boom, shakalaka laka. Ding dong. Here's Hannah. Here's Hannah. Hello. You've got yourself a, a wholesome drink there, Hannah. I do. I have a, a cup of um, actually decaf coffee. Yes, I've got decaf, decaf coffee drink from as the well. street vet. From the street, from the street vet, yes. Mug from, um, yeah, from this year's, uh, well, last year's now, uh, street vet conference. Uh, Excellent stuff. Yeah, I'm a uh, street vet one, street vet volunteer. Great. <laughs> yeah. And street vet's going well, is it? Yes, going from strength to strength, strength to strength. Um, launching more of the um, accredited hostels, more of those coming on board every every, every few weeks, it seems. So yeah, do, doing well. What, what, what do you do with street vet then? Sorry? What do you do with street vet? What do I do? Um, well, obviously, because mm. I'm not clinically qualified, but mm. I am pathologically organised. So right. um, my uh, role primarily is um, helping out with like, the, the management side of things. Um, specifically, I, I help run their annual conference. Um, right. So I generally just help out with the logistics and I do kind of speaker management and registration and, and stuff like that. Cool. Mm. That's quite brilliant. We had, we had Jade stat on the uh, yes, on long I time saw ago. Your, your list of, of yeah. previous guests. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah, they are Absolutely good people fabulous. doing good things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was always struck by the, the, the her humility and yes. the way she she started, and she wondered quite why she didn't get the reaction she was expecting when she just rocked up to somebody went, <laughs> "Hi, I'm the vet." <laughs> yes, let me help you. Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> So no, yeah. that's that's brilliant stuff. Yeah. But you didn't start at Street Vet, did you, Hannah? No, 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 not at all. You um, started as a pharmacologist. I did, yes. <laughs> kind of accidentally. I just thought it looked like something that might be vaguely interesting. How old were um, you when you thought that? Oh, well, that was after I left school, so it wasn't intentional at all. Um so I took two years when I left school. So I t- had like a two double gap year, I call it. Oh, yeah. Um, and decided that I probably should go to university. My parents were probably slightly despairing of the fact that I hadn't yet. Um, and I thought the pharmacology looked vaguely interesting. So off I went. So you, you went down the list then. You got to the P's. And... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't it, get... it was, all, it was almost, almost that arbitrary. Yeah, I'd done science A-levels, so... Like that kind of narrowed it down a little bit, but yeah, that was about it. Not a great deal. It's not usually. It could have been psychologist. It could have been physicist. It could have been, been quite easily. Yep. But you chose pharmacology. I chose pharmacology. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Which means well, that it, could have, it could have actually been more relevant had you studied ecology or farms. 
It could, yes. A, a lot of people did assume that that's what I was studying. Yes. Mm. Um, okay. <laughs> the number of people that if you tell them that you're studying pharmacology, they either assume it's something to do with, with farming and agriculture, or they assume you're going to be a pharmacist. Those, those, those two things. Okay. Such is the basic knowledge of pharmacology. Tell us what pharmacology is, Anna, for those people oh. who, who think it is counting badgers being killed unnecessarily <laughs> to treat to, to TB. <laughs> I didn't say that. Sorry. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do the easy distinguisher between pharmacology and pharmacy. So pharmacy is you dispense drugs to, to sick people. Pharmacology is you design and make new drugs. That's... That's the difference. Mm. Um, is a from and a Greek, of course. Ecology, study of yep, pharma, yep, and pharma, medicine. Absolutely. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Obviously, same route. <laughs> <laughs> but what what made you decide that that wasn't going to be your course? Having having spent how many years? Three years. Yeah, only three. When you compare to, to the um, to the veterinary course, yeah, I did yeah, I did uh, three three year degree. Um, mm. I. Yeah. It was just, it's going to sound silly, a little bit too sciencey and not really enough people -y, um, okay. for me. And I wanted to do something right. that was a, bit, a little bit more applied. Um, so a, a lot of my peers on the degree course, they went off to work at, and kind of mostly went off to work in, in sort of drug companies and, and that kind of thing. And I didn't really fancy doing that. I mean, this has been a bit of a theme for my, for my career is that I, I get some kind of qualification and think, well, actually, maybe that's not quite for me. So um, I came back home again, not really knowing what I wanted to do next. Um, and then just happened to get a job in a vet, and that's when something clicked. <laughs> it's all about preparation, then, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, absolutely, yes. If, if you look back from now, you can see how all the different sort of career stops join up, but right. you couldn't have predicted it looking forwards. Okay. I mean, um, yeah. Despairing well, parents it? still alive? <laughs> <laughs> they are very much so, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they, are they disappointed? Um, I, I, I think they might be. Yes, I think they thought I'd probably could have made something of, of, of my career. But <laughs> my, my mum was always disappointed. She, yeah. Yeah, she wanted me to become an actor. Oh, she was always disappointed. I became a bit. Oh, really? she, she pretended when she was with other people. She pretended. <laughs> I, I know really that she's oh, dreadfully. No, it, woefully disappointed in my, my choice of career <laughs> no i i think that they pretty much came around to where i've ended up even now when, when I, I ring my parents my dad will still answer the phone with hello doctor so yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe he's just hopeful he's gonna at last get that call back from the gb <laughs> <laughs> it was promised two years ago during <laughs> covid maybe that's, it. <laughs> maybe that's it but yeah <laughs> oh, right so, so so then you so you moved then into into veterinary practice mm, i did yes and you discovered that it was not about animals and all about no, people mostly about people yeah um yeah so uh, yeah I, I graduated well um i was uh, maybe a little in my mid-20s by then because i'd taken a little while to go to university um graduated and came back home at 24 i think i was um yeah, and I'd, I'd been working at my local vets just as a kind of receptionist slash Saturday girl slash ANA type person that all veterinary practices, I think, have at some point or other. Um, so I went back there to work, um, was employed as a receptionist um, to start with. And then within about six months or so, the practice manager announced that she was leaving. Um, and the boss kind of asked me if I wanted to do it. Um, and it was your absolutely classic being dropped into a job that you've had pretty much zero training for and a kind of a sink or swim, do your best job. Um, and yeah, that was the start of my kind of career in, in the veterinary sector. Wow. Mm. wow. Yeah. <laughs> and it didn't really stop, did it? it didn't, you, you, you're not a practice manager at the moment, are you? No. No, no, no. Um, so that that was the, um, the the start of sort of coming into into the, the veterinary sector and, and and kind of falling in love with everything that goes on in it. Um, but yeah, so I was practice manager for a, a good few years, and because of the the type of practice that we were, so we were a um, an exotics referral practice. Um, so did all sorts of really cool stuff for a, for a start off. So that um, so that would kept it interesting. Um, and also because of the exotics work, we had a, an awful lot of EMS students come through who wanted to see the cool stuff that we were doing so pretty much it, like every um sort of ems period we, we would have students come through um 
and talking to them and getting to know them and, and just sort of finding out how it all worked kind of got me interested in the education side of things mm-hmm. and kind of wanted to take that a little bit further wanted to do a little bit more studying um so um I went back to school kind of part-time and and, and did my um uh, did a, a master's degree I was trying to find something in in the veterinary social sciences nothing existed mm-hmm. um, still doesn't really um in terms of sort of uh, master's level stuff but uh my local university here down here in, in Kent they did a, a master's degree in health services research that included some very good sort of transferable um stuff from um from the the, the human medical field so I did that, and that kind of led into my my lovely um, uh, dissertation supervisor saying, "Hey, like, there's some more in this research. If you want to take it a bit further, have you thought about doing a PhD?" And I hadn't uh, particularly, but um, it seemed like a fantastic idea. <laughs> um, so mm-hmm. yeah, so that 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 was then the next step. Um, applied for research council funding, managed to get a um, a grant. Um, and spent three absolutely fabulous years being a student slash researcher slash doing a bit of teaching. Um, yeah, and that, that obviously then sparked my what's then been the rest of my career since in sort of education, research, academia, and combining that with the experience from, from running a family practice. I, I can just imagine you phoning your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, doctor. Have you got a real job yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, I, yeah, I do get that occasionally. Particularly when, yeah, particularly when I went back into academia um, afterwards, it was a bit kind of like, oh, you're going back, back into your ivory tower kind of thing. But <laughs> no, I, I think it's um, appreciated. I do now have a, a proper job, proper grown-up job. Um, uh, but yeah, the, so what I do now kind of brings together the aspects of sort of education and teaching aspects of research and the aspects of sort of leadership and management that come from running the very practice it brings it all together so i've managed to find that elusive you know, the thing with the, the the um the venn diagram it's like what was it what the what the world needs what you're good at what you can be paid to do and what you enjoy and if you can find a spot in the middle of those four overlapping sections then you're doing all right and that's where you find well, yourself now is it I pretty much am yeah well done yeah we're, we're, getting, we're getting to that in a minute i want to leave the listeners guessing through because you had a spell at the rvc my alma mater mm-hmm. yep. and um what were you doing there uh teaching so um that was um after i finished my phd um i joined the um the live uh, department there um li- or lifelong innovative veterinary education I think. Mm-hmm. um yeah. So they run the um, master's degree in veterinary education. Um, So I was teaching on that uh, primarily. So uh, ran a couple of modules in the veterinary education thing. So that was obviously teaching the RVC staff. So taking the fabulous clinicians and giving them some some teaching skills as well. Um, And also sort of external people. So we had people from all sorts of other sort of universities, vet schools, vet nursing colleges, people in sort of industry and practice who had teaching roles or coaching roles, that kind of thing would come and do um, the masters in veterinary education. Um, And I did some um, undergrad teaching as well, which um, I really enjoyed on the um, the professional, um, professional studies strand. So we used to run, um, at the rotation groups and the communication skills and uh, that kind of thing. So we used to do workshops with the actors and stuff. Always such good fun. Um, but yeah, that was that was always something that I really enjoyed doing. And this because the students are just fab. Um, so that's always nice. You have to say that, don't you? Annoying little squirts, all of them. Well, <laughs> you have to say it. No, genuinely. No, among, it's like you're among friends yeah. now. They, they yeah. Like okay, you could, yeah. Both of our listeners will. will yeah. Will. <laughs> yeah. Both, both, of our, both of our listeners have told us what they think of a student. And so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and one of them was a student. So, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. still is. Still is. Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't, I don't think they listen anymore, though, Julian. Oh, the, the you them off. Yeah. <laughs> shame, shame. So it's still just my sister and, uh, <laughs> well, just my sister. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. okay. And she doesn't like students either, does she? <laughs> she doesn't like students. No. Well, well see, seeing as my job involves quite a big chunk of teaching, then the fact that I've. I, I, okay, okay. So we'll, probably, we'll go on with that. Yes, but, um, <laughs> 
Um, I I do, as as does Mike, a little bit of teaching along the way. Uh, I was going to say I do mine on a very amateurish uh, basis. Mike does his on a very professional basis. But we we both we were talking today. I've been off teaching today in a practice uh, in in, uh, in the in the east of the country. Uh, Mike's going off to the west of the country to teach. We both get a huge buzz out of teaching and it, it's uh, it's really rewarding just seeing uh the joy that you can pass on for a subject or or, or recognizing the, the the joy and the love you have for a subject is is echoed back is mirrored mm. absolutely yeah people. I, I learn something every time yeah oh uh, yeah it, yeah it's a cliche but it's true yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and you, you see the light bulbs go on it's such a great moment definitely yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's all, all good fun mm. oh, i don't know so I actually see. go on, oh, go on <laughs> no no I, I, well I, I was gonna make it all all serious but you were probably gonna ask some no, really... no, you make it serious that time got serious oh, okay because i think you know we, we're talking about all this teaching and university phd masters degrees and 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 careers and um and I'm going to get shot for this because this is his line. What, what I think we all really want to know is, is what is your favourite cake? Yes, what is it? <laughs> we, okay. We need to that, know. that is a very important question. I will grant you that. Um, it varies, but my current favourite cake, I have to say, so I'm very lucky in that where I live, there is a cafe almost directly opposite my house mm-hmm. um that does the most fantastic coffee and cake and they have a coffee and pecan cake that is my current favorite oh it's mm. very nice indeed coffee and pecan and pecan coffee. now mike you'd have to make sure it's a decaf coffee yeah i, I, I would actually yeah. yeah 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 so i yeah. could i could go a coffee and pecan cake i highly recommend it if you're ever visiting yeah. kent <laughs> pop down <laughs> coffee so what, what's, what's the name of the cake shop uh, it's called hut, it's called hut 55 because it's, it's in a beach hut on the seafront hut 55 mm-hmm. yeah coffee and pecan cake okay yeah. i think we should give a big <laughs> shout out to hut 55 <laughs> definitely <laughs> it, and do they only do coffee and cake do they do um, seafood comestibles as well they don't know because they're they're off grid so they've literally got a, a solar panel that runs the coffee machine and everything they do cake and they do um sort of sandwiches and it's like cold things and stuff but it, it's dangerous because it's literally almost opposite my house and i work from home so i i spend quite a lot of my <laughs> time slash money <laughs> over there it's very easy just to wander over the road and, and pick something up right so, so from my notes from my notes here um Right, so the next question is, how's the diet going? <laughs> <laughs> I have the willpower of blancmange, so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not. Oh, but but you, you burn off a few calories, we've heard. Doing, I, do burn, I do try and... Doing things in... I do try and balance things out, yes, with um, a bit of... It's, technically, it's running. Yeah, for me, it's more of a shuffle, but I do try and keep doing it mm-hmm. um but yeah so i'm a a, a very keen um park runner so i'm a, a run director for our local park run and our local junior park run and and i'm the um east kent uh, regional ambassador for park run so i'm a big flag waver for inclusive sport participation volunteering the general giant feeling of warm fuzzies that is park run on a saturday morning yeah I, I i went i went to go on one of those once and I, I pitched up on friday evening and um Head start. By, by, saturday, by saturday morning um yeah, I, I was a little bit warm and fuzzy because I, I think i put too much to drink the night before well we we had some magnus on that park bench haven't we yeah we have enough yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I like, I like shouting as they all run by in the in the little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That, that's a thing. We have people that do that on our local park run, <laughs> whether from the night before or not. But, well, that'll yeah, be that'll be it, Mike and I. It's all about it's all about embracing the community. <laughs> Whatever. Well, they won't they won't let Mike embrace the community these days. They say the one thing you mustn't embrace is the community. Yeah, a hundred yards away yeah. from the. Well, you, yeah. you can show your enthusiasm from a safe distance. Yeah, well, they, they told him off for that as well. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Showing far too much enthusiasm that day. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, we have we have a great relationship actually with the with the with the locals down here at our local one. We have people who who regularly walk their dogs at the same time, and they'll always give us a clap and a cheer and and say good morning. It's it's, it's really lovely. <laughs> but what 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 intrigues me here though, Hannah, is that you with with practice management, you're involved in management and organisation. Your PhD yeah. is management and organisation, and and your rest and recovery. You know, obviously you've you've got you've got another role currently that we haven't come to yet. But your rest and recovery is management and organisation. <laughs> well, it's not always the um the, the, the beauty of Parkrun is that it, it's run by it's run by a team. So right. you you might be um, run director one week, but then you won't do it again for another couple of months. So it's it's. And it's not about the running, it's about the community. It's about the getting together with your pals in the morning and then going for breakfast afterwards. So there's a break, there's a, there's oh. a feast. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And there's I'm, cake I'm, at breakfast, is there? Definitely there is cake at breakfast, yes. Oh. And sometimes a bacon sandwich. Mm. Oh. Okay. oh. It's starting to look all right now. Isn't yeah, it? I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to understand parkrun, I think. There yeah. you go. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's not about the run at all. Yeah. So if you want to get into parkrun, what would... What, uh, what do you do? You, you can just rock up. Um, so if you go um, on the website, it will show you a map of, well, a map of the world because Parkrun is global now. Um, but if you just look at the, the map of the UK, it will show you where your nearest one is. There is bound to be one, at least one in, in your local town. There are over 700 of them in the UK now. Um, you can uh, register and it will give you a barcode. You can print out a barcode um, and that will then you take that along if you want to get an official time. Um, and some people use that as then a target. They're like, right, next week I'm going to try and beat my time. Um, some people get a bit competitive about it. Some people like me, they just go along to enjoy the scenery and a chat. Um, and then your barcode then works at any park run well, across the world. So um, wow. there's a bunch of us that like to go and travel to different park runs. Um, there's a whole bunch of challenges around that. So there's the alphabet challenge. We have to go and visit a park run starting with each letter of the alphabet um so it it, it in, it's, sequentially not not well you you, you can that that's because, obviously the advanced challenge because <laughs> park doesn't exist does it no well you say that um there is no x anywhere in the world but there are a few z's so the nearest z is in the netherlands at zweda park there are a couple in poland that are z's so mm. you have to go international to get your z but you can do a, every letter of the alphabet apart from x and z in the uk <laughs> So we need a Xanadu Park, don't we? We do, very much so. If someone if someone started a Xanadu Park run in the UK, they would be overrun. So whoever okay. set up the cafe or, there would make a fortune. Or Xenopus. There could be a Xenopus Park that in, would work, um, in yes. Africa. Yes, we always... Life and times of the African clawed toad, Xenopus Mingus. That would work, mm. yes. We always thought uh, RVC, because my um, office window overlooked um, sort of the, the, um, the basically the fields behind the equine building. And we thought, well, if that's the x-ray building, we could set up like x-ray park run in the field behind the, the um, yeah. diagnostic imaging yeah. building. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few okay. on, on university campuses and, and schools and that kind of stuff, so it's not impossible. Would it be, would it be cheating to run across a place that, that was recently a park but, but had been recommissioned and you could call it an X park. Oh, I see what you mean. Um what would that I'm not sure that would work because you have to take like the official park run name for it to count towards the oh, challenge. Right, okay. So Julian, I've got a feeling this isn't going to be for you. <laughs> We're, we're, we're really the best stop conversation now. on working out how to cheat on it. So I think you'll yeah. be right. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah, absolutely. Okay. How far do you run? 5k. Okay. Yeah, 5k or 3.1 miles if you're old school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So some people will run twice around the park then. Well, depending on the on how, size of the park exactly it depends on how big your park is so some oh. some some routes are one lap some there's one in london that's actually five laps of a 1k park right. um, which i'm not sure i could do because i can't count up to five when i'm concentrating on other things <laughs> um, but, um yeah as some like our home home run here it, we're not actually in a park we're actually along the seafront so we just go out and back in a straight line for two and a half k and turn around and come back again mm. um, so it very much depends on 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 the location there's, there's a park run on the seven bridge where you start in wales you run across to england and come back again um so there's all sorts of um sort of quirky routes that you can go and visit just for fun okay so it doesn't have to be a park 
No, it doesn't have to be a park at all. No, the, the one at Brooklands is on the old racing circuit. So it's really squiggly because you go around the cart track. Um, yeah, there's bridges, parks, seafronts. Um, there's mm. a, a, a um, custodial um, park run movement that set up park runs in prisons mm. um, and young offender institutions. So, so they have to run with a file in their hand. No, funnily enough, but they're not allowed to use a phone or a, a GPS watch. Um, but, the, but, but the idea is that it, it's a familiar thing because it's a global thing. You can start doing park run while you're still serving your time. And then when you go out, you can take your barcode into something that's familiar on a Saturday morning because the setup is exactly the same. Um, mm. So it's providing that link between um, the sort of incarcerated population and then a rehabilitation as, as you go out. And, and I, I hopefully just, the next time you run, you don't have arrows on your suit. Yes, and you have a big ball around your ankle and a, thing, and a, and a guy with a truncheon chasing you, and that's what makes you go faster. Right. That, must be, that must be difficult, mustn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> didn't, didn't they start a, a triathlon at Alcatraz, but they ran out of people to do it? Really? Yeah. Did they? How do you cycle? I can see how you might do the running and the swimming, but how would you do the cycling bit? What, round the Big Sur? So they swim from Alcatraz to the harbour. Aren't there sharks? Sharks everywhere, aren't there? <laughs> a few. A few. Make you go faster. One or two. I think. It's a bit it's of a myth, that. really, isn't it? I don't know. They, they whack him over the head with that ball on the chain. Ah, probably. that's what it's for. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm sure there was a triathlon, an Alcatraz triathlon. I'm going to look it up now. What's He's going to look it up. The Alcatraz triathlon. Yeah, excuse me so while we Google. What made you get into park running? Well, we did you run before? Or? No, not not at all. I no, I I done couch to five k a couple of times, but it never really stuck. Um, and then it was actually while I was a, a post grad student over in um a Canterbury, and I was looking for something to get a bit fitter, and thought I ought to. And you know, in in Freshers Week, when you get given all the flyers about all the stuff that goes on mm. like on mm. campus, um, one of the things was Canterbury Park Run that is actually held at the University of Kent campus. And so it said, oh, yeah, come and join us for like a sociable 5K run on Saturday morning. So I was like, all right. <laughs> OK. Um, and I can remember showing up and it was absolutely filthy, wet, freezing cold day. And I thought there's going to be nobody here and it's going to be miserable. Um, and there were 100 people there and they were chirpy as anything. And I was like, OK. And then I sort of got to understand the philosophy. And it's like, well, we have marshals who are contractually obliged to come last. So you won't um we we cheer everybody in you're welcome to run walk a bit of both do ever what you want you've got cheery marshals on the course who will cheer you around we go for like like i say we go for breakfast afterwards in in this cafe on campus and i'm like hey these are my people it's 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 kind of exercise but it it's it's a social thing and it's a community and it works and that I was get a job as marshal. I wouldn't mind that. Is that you know, marshalling is fantastic. You get, you get every, most of the runners who come past you will say thank you, marshal, um, and they'll give you a little thumbs up as you go by, and they'll say thank you for volunteering. And again, big dose of the warm fuzzies. Brilliant. Mm. Wow. Mm. It does it does remind me of a, a very thick friend of my dad's who many years ago took on uh, a job or, or applied for a job as aerobics coach. Uh, because he said, and I quote, well, I like driving buses and I like planes, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say no more. It's enough. It, isn't, it he, the, isn't he the guy that you wanted to die like, you know, quiet and peaceful in his sleep? That's it, yes. Not, yeah. not screaming as chaps and like the 47 people on his bus. <laughs> 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 oh, escape uh, escape from Alcatraz kicks off at seven thirty in the morning, and that's obviously the secret of success. <laughs> the sharks aren't awake at seven. Ah, that must be it. They're not awake. No, of course they're not. Wow, that's going to be an interesting risk assessment, isn't it? <laughs> I like the thoughts of sharks having a little snooze. I'm having a rest in bed. What's going on? What's that? Is it a human? Oh, let it go. It's the Saturday tomorrow at eight o'clock. Yeah. yeah, weekend. Off yeah. duty. Yeah. <laughs> and? Wow. <laughs> That's fine. The dolphins get up earlier and tease them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Almost certainly. I hate, I hate those chirpy buggers. They bloody corpses. They get on my nerves. 6.30 they woke me up this morning. I had half an hour in bed still. 6.30. Bloody corpses. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, my mind drifted a bit there. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe we're having such a, such a serious conversation. We haven't had a serious conversation like this for months. Oh, <laughs> another serious conversation. Let's, let's, let's move okay. more serious. We're into oh, education. Okay. We're into learning. Mm-hmm. And Mike and I are kind of in the mood for learning. Not oh, for long. Oh, I guess I guess I could I could learn something for a minute. Okay. Oh, something. okay. How about that? Could, could you have you heard of our little section called Sixty I have, Second CPD? Yes, I've been warned. <laughs> You warned. Warned. Who tipped you off? Pr- promised you. Promised. Who warned you about this? <laughs> was it our producer? Uh, well, partly yes, but it was also um, Mark Hedberg, who's a previous guest of yours. Ah, yes. Uh, well, well, there we go. And Mark did a very successful six second CPD. Oh, okay. No pressure. No, no there pressure. We go. Uh, no. Exactly on time, as I recall. Mm. It was, wasn't it? To the second, but didn't it take second, about three second. weeks to practice that? It did, oh. it did, yes. <laughs> did you do it in Hungarian? Or Hungarian, no, did it in Hungarian. Hungarian whilst yep. playing the guitar on, on his unicycle. It was very <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise yeah. me. Did you have a 60-second CPD for us, Hannah? I do have a 60-second CPD for you, yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Come on then, Hannah. So what's your 60-second CPD? You're up for this challenge, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Excellent. give it a go. So yeah. what, 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 what's your 60-second CPD going to be? Uh, so be. I'm going to give you a 60-second CPD on how to build your support network as a veterinary leader. Oh, OK. Ooh. Interesting. OK, so right. So are you ready? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll key you in on this one. Here's the magic okay. clock. All right. So yep. Hannah Perrin, 60-second CPD on how to build your support network as a veterinary leader starting now. Okay, this is important because as leaders, we spend a lot of our time supporting others. It's a big chunk of our jobs, but we also need to think about who's supporting us and who's looking after us while we're doing it. So I use the acronym SPACE. Who's in your space? So S, supporter. Probably a close friend, family member, someone who encourages you, understands you, space to let off steam. P, promoter. Someone who knows your work, who advocates for you. They'll write great references. They'll nominate you for awards, that kind of thing. A, advisor. Someone who's an expert in your field that you can go to for advice, guidance, recommendations. C, challenger. This one is really important. Someone who causes you to reconsider your ideas, rethink your approach, call out your assumptions, help you avoid getting stuck in a rut. E, empowerer. This person will have a coaching role rather than offering answers. They'll know how to ask the right questions and help you to find the answers yourself. You probably won't need all five at a time, but they are there if you need them at different times in your career. So the challenge for this 60 second CPD is to make sure you've got those five people in your network and what they can do for you. Oh, well, I'll take that. Well, nailed it. <laughs> oh, that, that, was, that was fantastic. Oh, that you should that, take that. That was truly, I always say we overuse the word awesome. And then yeah. I say it, that was awesome. Fitting valid. <laughs> Thank you With very much. Such energy as well. <laughs> energy, energy yet clarity. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take uh, that. I, I, otherwise, I, I'll just talk too fast. 60 seconds <laughs> is not long. It's not long. No, that when I was long. thinking about what I was going to do for this, I was like, oh, I can tell you about this or that. I was like, no, I can't. I need to bring, bring it down a bit. <laughs> My only like some people can run a quarter of a mile in 60 seconds, can't they? Yeah, I am not that person. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not either. <laughs> hey, we could start that as a challenge. That'd be good. No, we wouldn't work on the right idea. <laughs> running <would> CPD. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if walking meetings are a thing, then running CPD maybe. Yeah. Could yeah, it could work. <laughs> Knowing yeah. our luck with internet connections, that would not work. Ah, oh, that's true. Yeah, you would need. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not sure that would work. So, <laughs> go on then, Juno. Sorry, I just, I just had a little question, which. Mm-hmm. Uh, any little question, I'm well aware, given your, your PhD and uh, exalted status in this field, uh, maybe a long answer. Um, leader. Yeah. So we're often told what, what constitutes a good leader or a bad leader. Mm-hmm. But I guess what constitutes a leader? Because we work in a practice that works as a team. Clearly, mm-hmm. there must be some sort of hierarchy. Mm-hmm for that yeah. team to work well but what are we what are we meaning by leader are, are we talking about I mean, we, we've had a leader on this show quite often who uh, unfortunately was brought down uh, hoisted by his own petard as a leader very very recently and he, mm. he, he might he might come on and tell us about that a little later but oh, uh, yeah. what, what do you what do you mean by, mm. by leader 
it, it's a really interesting question and it's one we we debate in uh, as 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 vmg as, as an organization and, and that i talk about with my with my two t's so the the first module that I, I teach is called understanding yourself as a leader so like what is your role and what are the leadership aspects of that and what leadership skills do you use in your role or what could you develop in your role um my approach to it is that i think a leader is anyone who can have an influence that's kind of how i define it so it could be something as sort of large scale as being ceo of a multinational corporation yes but it could be a receptionist having a conversation across a reception desk with um uh, an owner who um is they're doing a they're discharging a, a common or garden cat castrate and in that situation the receptionist can have an influence so i think everybody in pretty much any role I could think of, there will be some aspect of where you are acting as a leader in some way, shape or form, whether that's part of a, a sort of a formalized management structure or whether it's just within your team, whether it's um, influence you might have over people that you've never met. If you look at people who are really active on social media, that kind of thing, it could be direct, it could be global. There are many, many facets to it, but I think the, the fundamental thing it comes down to it, someone who can have an influence over, over something else. That's, that's mm. my take on it. And, and you, you mentioned in your email to us about um, leadership that um, that you can improve uh, any, any form of leadership. I, I wonder, and I put you on the spot here. Okay. I'm Genghis Khan, so tell me how I can improve my leadership. Um, I would suggest that you might need to modernise. Right. That's a cop answer, in his, but it's a cop. <laughs> In his time, it was pretty modern. No one else had, had um, amalgamated tribes together. Had they? No, that, that, that is true, yes. For his time, yeah, absolutely. Um, but there are so many different, like we said, so many different facets mm. of leadership. There are, there's obviously the, the your sort of the military style kind of thing, commander of men kind of thing. Um, but maybe with Genghis Khan, hey, let's talk about emotional intelligence. Let's talk about the psychological safety of your teams. Let's talk about the use of technology in your leadership. So there's a lot of things I, I think that Genghis Khan, yes, could update his, his leadership skills on. <laughs> yeah, it was Genghis Khan, it was Genghis Khan, am I bothered? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I giggled a bit when you mentioned Genghis Khan's emotional uh, intelligence. intelligence, but but it, it is it is true actually, and I, I I dread to think that there are a few vets out there who, who have the same mentality as Genghis Khan. I know the bleak comments. I've, I've, worked, <laughs> I've worked for some, if but briefly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I see this is the thing. This is the, this is the really interesting thing when we're talking about leadership is that if I talk to if I talk to any of my tutees, colleagues, whoever, pretty much everybody can identify the great leaders that they've had in their careers and the really bad ones. Like anybody who just kind of did okay muddling along the middle doesn't really register. But if you talk about what makes what makes a leader, people can talk about the role models and what I call the anti models. So the people that that they've worked with and gone, okay, if I ever get into a leadership like a formal leadership position that's that's how i'm not going to do it mm. um but on the other hand you get people talking about the great things that like the old bosses have done this kind of thing that have been really inspirational and i think that is um a really great part of what kind of inspires people to step up into into formal leadership roles within the veterinary sector or anywhere do you do you have an inspirational figure i have several yeah yeah definitely i mean the the the, the space acronym that um that i use that i've um, written about um is an interesting one because i could probably fit several people into several of of, of the different categories i think when i first um I sort of came up with that acronym and started talking about it i yeah, it kind of occurred to me that i didn't particularly have people that i felt should were um that challenging and I felt oh well the people in my circle they're, they're like we, we collaborate it's great we we sort of amplify each other as, as ideas and that's fantastic um but I really I, I should probably actively seek out people who might challenge my ideas um a bit more and people who think differently to what I do and, and to how I do and, and that kind of aspect of it um I find really interesting <laughs> I'm I'm a school governor and part of the school governor's roles is to be, uh, is to provide friendly challenge mm -hmm. yep. to the leadership team. Mm. And it's it's all about that, actually. Yeah. I, 
I provide very friendly challenge to, to the head and to the leadership team because I have a huge respect mm. for what they do. Absolutely, yeah. I've been seconded to other schools at uh, various times where I felt I've had little or no respect for the way they do things. Mm. Uh, and the, the challenge there becomes less friendly. Um, and I think from that point of view, it's much easier to pinpoint poor leadership, in my experience, mm. than, than good leadership. We can all say what we think could be done better. But when you yeah. push to say, well, you know, what, why do you admire, revere, respect so-and-so as a leader? Yeah. Then it becomes a bit, well, okay, I, I, I just, because, <laughs> uh, you know, we can all pinpoint the things that are done badly much more easily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just because they have a more, uh, they have a, a, a greater emotional impact, I think. Um, so we've all heard the, 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 the phrase that people don't leave jobs, they leave bad, or bad jobs, they leave bad leaders or leave bad managers, that kind of thing. That's quite a, a, a thing that you see sort of going around social media and, and, and that kind of thing. And the impact that a, not necessarily a bad leader, but a leader that doesn't just sort of align with your own personal values or goals or whatever it might be or that the, the fit just isn't right um that has much of a, a much more of a, an emotional impact than if you were ticking along just fine with um whoever it is that, that is, is in charge whether it's a like a line manager or, or a, a sort of a senior leader or, or whoever it might be um so in that sense i think when you ask people like if i ask my my students okay give me an example of like leadership that you have experienced the first example they come up with is almost entire is almost always a, a negative one mm. and it's usually that they can pinpoint like a, a specific thing that happened it wasn't like a, a general approach of them sometimes obviously it is um but it's usually well the, this one thing happened and this is how they dealt with it that i didn't agree with and mm. that, that was a, the issue. A pivotal, a pivotal mm. moment yeah yeah yeah, yeah. People look upon leaders for, for different reasons. They, they, they get different things out of it. And sometimes what they want is recognition for themselves. They, they follow leaders because actually they think that's, they're sycophantic. Right. And, and they think that you follow so-and-so because they can, they can only do me good by, right. by reveling in their, in their company. Okay. Um, and and I, I guess that, that was where, it would be useful to have our, our friend on, wouldn't it, perhaps, to, to say what, what, in his view, makes a good leader. Should I, should I oh. get in? Yeah, go, go, and, go and see. If he's around, just go and, go and see and we'll, we'll find out. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what... I mean, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> Intrigued. I, yes, I, I'm <laughs> BJ, uh, BJ, 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 shut up. BJ, 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 BJ. Yeah, quite, yes. We're, yes. we're just discussing a few things here, and yes, we were discussing yes. what makes a great leader, and we were wondering whether well, you thank had Thank you very much. Thank you this. very much. Yes, I did, I did uh, and still do make a great leader, uh, if that's what you're referring to, and I, I take all, all that compliment on board very, very much indeed. And I think, uh, certainly with me, that the fact uh, that I'm recognised, th thank you uh, indeed for, for, for being a, the, the great, uh, the great un unsurpassed uh, leader, that is uh, the fact that, that, that actually what, what, I, what I say is always... Uh, filled with integrity. I, I pay for my integrity. I pay a great deal of taxpayers' money for my integrity. Always that. Um, I, yeah, honesty, honesty. That's something I'm willing to buy and um, and lie about. Uh, if it helps my calls at all. Um, and and sheer charisma. Um, that's charisma Carpenter. She was an actress, a jolly nice person. I'm here to make her wife number eight. Uh, just after uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, who, who probably probably will say no, but I, I I don't take no for an answer. That's the thing about me. So I, I, a good leader, yes, thank you. I am. I, I, I will continue to be uh, the leader of the Conservative Party uh, long into uh, uh, long, long into the twenty thirties. This is despite the fact you've resigned. Well, no, I think no. I I'll get back to that question because it is a very good one to, to answer. Actually, uh, resigning isn't really what what happened. I think you're you're twisting. Uh, uh, I think what the uh, uh, what the uh, the the, uh, the uh, I, I, no, no, right, okay. So there, I'm I'm still going. I know they'll, they'll prize my my fetid fat dead body away from Ten Downing Street in, in the fullness <laughs> of time, but not before then. Good, Holy good. Well, uh, goodbye, uh, but not goodbye. I'm never leaving. Good, goodbye. Yes. Okay. Well, th thank you very much for that, BJ. Bye, bye, BJ. Oh, that is uncanny. 
Mm. It's scary. He is uncanny, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we've, all, we've all said that about him. He is very <laughs> uncanny. <laughs> quite, quite scary, actually. I, I, I'm quite concerned for the future of veterinary ramblings, actually, because we're going to lose, <laughs> we're going to lose one of our guests here, unless, of course, he stays in the news. In which case, um, yeah. yeah, we can always hope. My, my Liz Truss impersonation is awful. <laughs> Well, who, well, there are various other impersonations we could do from the uh, the current cabinet, couldn't we? The uh, we've well, been we, talking about education. We, we have, we have. Although we were talking the other day about uh, nominative determinism, oh. uh, you know, pin, pinch by name, pincher by nature, or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, I wonder what people would do with tug and that. But there we go. Um, <laughs> no, just we move the on. subject. <laughs> we move on. Um, you you gave us a tremendous sixty second CPD. You did. And yeah. I feel it would be churlish of us not to provide this CPD certificate for you and for our listeners for it that. Would. It would. Uh, so so we have one here. This is uh, a certificate of improved learning. Oh, wow! And it says this this certifies that a support network will build better leaders. And it says re- remember space your your acronym. Excellent. Kind of and uh, in in the brief time I've had to, to do this, I've got a cake just just there. There's a little homemade cake. Yeah, Lovely, but is that yeah. is that is that a pecan and coffee cake? <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. It's a it's a rich fruit cake, but uh, decorated for someone's wedding. Okay. Um, I don't run, but there's me diving uh, into some water and there's Love, yeah yeah water. plenty of sea swimming around here. That's very appropriate. Yeah. Yep. But but running uh, running while standing still on a rock out at sea. Fabulous. Uh, but but there's a park bench there uh, with uh, with some wine on it. So that, that was really where where you'll find Mike and myself as we watch the uh, the jolly James okay. associated with uh, with park running and decide whether it's for us. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Very well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. much. No, I, th- I think it's very good actually. I think, but but uh, hang on. Whoa 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 whoa. Time out because. You know, it's all very well having our CPD mm-hmm. and it's all very well having our certificate, but we are expected to reflect we on are. things we that are. we've we've learned. Um, yes. And that, that brings me, I, I think, very neatly. Well, I think so, because it was me. Um, it was very neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, round to, to reflection. So, mm. Hannah, have you got a reflection question for us that ties in with some of the stuff we've been talking about? Um, I have, yes. Um, I mean, it, it's reflection um, generally is something that obviously everybody's expected to do um, as part of their CPD and reflecting on specific learnings you have. Um, but the one that I'd like, um, I think it'd be, be nice to think about is a question that I was asked quite recently, actually. And I was like, oh, it probably made me think. So I'm going to share it with you guys. So the question is, if you were given a year off work, you'd still get your salary, but a year off work, what would you do? Okay. Mm. And then the second part of that is having thought about that, how could you bring elements of that, what you would do if you had the opportunity into what is actually your day job? Okay. So that's, that's a long, that's along the lines of, if money were no object, mm-hmm. what would you do? Yeah. But then you've twisted it because, unfortunately, money has got an object and you are going to have to earn your living next week. Right. So what would you bring? Yeah, so us? it's kind of like, well, let's think about like the bigger picture. If like mm-hmm. some somebody waved a magic wand and said, right, we're going to pay you for a year, but you can go and do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And so that how be- do you turn your job into a hobby? And then how do you go about turning that hobby back into a job? You can take it that far, yeah. But uh, my kind of slightly more pragmatic approach, perhaps, <laughs> is, well, if you had this opportunity to go and do this thing, what would that be? But then you think, well, okay, well, so that's obviously what you're passionate about and what you'd love to spend your time doing. So in the interests of well-being and work-life balance and all those good things, how, could you bring elements of that into what you're doing now? Because that's obviously what, what makes you happy. Hmm. What would you do? That's a really good question. Do you know, to be honest, I think what I do is go and milk cows for a year. Right. Okay. 
Now, by hand, or would you use a herringbone uh, type? I would probably use a herringbone parlor, right, yes, okay. please, because otherwise it would take hours. <laughs> and I would preferably not get up for the 4 a.m. milk because this is like ideal world we're thinking here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think it would be something mm. like that. I, I worked on a dairy farm for a bit um, as a student and I was massively happy doing it. It was probably the fittest I've ever been in my life. Um, so well, it, it sounds, it's the bucolic life, certainly, isn't it? We often take the bucolic life as being the idyllic yeah. life, but yeah. that doesn't explain why nearly a quarter of dairy farmers have given up this year. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't make money doing it. This is this is why it, it, this is why it's. Or if you could go and do it for a year and still be paid, and still be paid, yeah. <laughs> and that's why yeah. I haven't gone and done it yet. <laughs> so, so what, just, just a brief aside here: anyone who doesn't drink milk, please, please drink milk. Don't go around milking blooming soya beans. They don't like it. Please support your local dairy farmer nope. and lobby government to actually pay dairy farmers a decent sum of money for their milk. Thank you. I agree with the latter, yeah, and the but not the former. <laughs> what you, you like? You like milking soya beans? <laughs> yeah, I like milking <laughs> soya beans. I, I, I don't like taking a mother's children away from her to keep her lactating. That's the argument. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, yeah, I, I totally get that, and and a lot of far, farmers are diversifying now because of the demand yeah. for like cow's mm. milk um, is yeah. going down. And, yeah. and farming is, and agriculture in, ge in general is going to have to, to modernise in response to yeah. changing demands and yeah. changes in what society generally finds acceptable. So yeah. things are absolutely are changing. OK, I'm going to come back to the question. What yeah. element of milking cows would you take into your current life? Your <laughs> that, that's a good question um i think well it, it's the time outside i think is is a big chunk of it it's um yeah in fact i think that probably is the biggest chunk of it it's the putting your alley boots on and getting muddy for a bit which i don't tend to do um <laughs> sat at my desk right um, yeah. so why not why not you you work from home you have uh hut 55 just opposite you <laughs> How about do. taking a longer route to Hut 55, putting your welly boots on and uh, I could. taking that cake for a walk? That I could absolutely do that. I do try and do that, maybe not quite to the welly boot standard, but I do try and and um, and do the um, and, and get outside. The trouble is, because obviously working from home, like I, I have some days where I, I, I get to sort of the end of the day, I think I haven't actually been outside mm -hmm. all day. And that's probably that's really not good for me. So I do actively try and. <laughs> Um, and, and go outside and, and top up the vitamin D and the sea air and, and that kind of thing. And it's you could get up at four o'clock in the morning and do that. I could. I, I absolutely could, Mike. I acknowledge that I could. Um, but I won't. <laughs> so, so there's your idyllic life. You do that. So, you, and Mike's asked, what, what elements could you bring back yeah. into that then? Um, why, why don't any of us do that? That's a big question. Mm. Um, I think there are a number of factors. Partly it's because people are concerned, whether rightly or wrongly, that you can't make money doing what, what you love or what your side hustle might be or what your hobby might be or, or whatever it is. That's true up to a point, but obviously people do make that mm -hmm. switch. Um, I think there's uh, an element of risk aversion, a kind of like, well, I've got a, a secure job and like, well, I'm paying the mortgage and all exactly, yeah, the bills and what yeah. have you. And I may have a family to support or whatever. And, and sort of upsetting the apple cart is a big, scary thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and well, I mean, it's something that we're seeing in, in the veterinary sector more generally, people getting disillusioned with sort of day to day practice life and starting to think, well, like, what are my options? And so we are seeing a little bit of a, people are like moving to part time work or flexible hours. So they've got time for doing this other stuff that might bring a different type of joy um, to to sort of rebalance things but i think probably those are the, the major factors why people don't sort of make the, mm. the big leap and say mm. right no i'm i'm jacking in the day job and going to climb kilimanjaro or <laughs> whatever it, whatever it might be mm -hmm. mm. as a leader shouldn't we be inspiring our staff to, mm. to, to to 
seek their heart's happiness to absolutely a better life yeah balance. yeah uh, absolutely and that, that's that's mm. one of the aspects of, of, of being a good leader of people is that you find out what that is for for, for your team and it's try and encourage yeah. their needs yeah. their wants their desires yeah yeah, yeah, and yeah. Find what, and, where possible to improve absolutely and and mm. matching up people's interests skills loves passions with whatever the role might be so whether that is in terms of sort of allocating responsibilities so if you've got a, a nurse who's super into sort of the client contact thing that's the nurse that runs your um, nurse clinics or that kind of thing so it might be matching up sort of roles and responsibilities and that kind of thing it might be um, offering um, sort of additional training CPD in particular in particular areas that mean that people can develop the things that they're really passionate about and that the better a match you can get between people's personal values and those of the organization then the better that fit's going to be the happier and more engaged your team are going to be and ultimately that benefits everybody <laughs> back to genghis khan now <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking oh. <laughs> <laughs> relax <laughs> dear oh dear oh dear <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so what have we got let's Let's, let's, let's quick recap on this one. So um, it's all about park life. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we've got to dance along to park life. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dance along yeah, to park my, life. My, my era, that was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Favourite cake, pecan and coffee. Killer 60-second yeah. CPD. Thank you. Really good. Space. Mm. Fabulous reflection question. We haven't touched on... Cross channel ferry stewardessing. Oh, we've done none of that. We haven't done any of that, have we? We could talk about that if you like. That was one of the jobs I had as a as a no, that was between school and university, that was. Right. Lots of fun. I, I, I can I can see your dad now. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Doctor, where are you now? <laughs> Calais. Calais. Whoa. Whoa. You what? <laughs> yeah. Tra traveling yeah, far yeah. too much. Yep, just to go backwards and forwards between Dover and Calais. That must have been exciting. It, do you know what? It was actually really good fun. It was a, a summer job I had, yeah, between school and university. Had the most horrendous nylon uniform, as I'm sure you could imagine, with a hat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the hat. Um, yes. Yeah. Regulation steel toe cap shoes that were amazing. Um, had to do all of the, the 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 sea survival training and stuff that all the regular crew had to do, even though we were just like summer students really so, yeah, yeah. oh that was yeah that was something probably one of the scariest things i've ever had to do was um because one of the things that you have to do as part of your sea survival training is you have to be able to jump from what would be the lowest deck of a ferry into the water mm -hmm. so they built a scaffold tower in our local swimming pool and wow. had us jump off the top oh, that was terrifying was it? Um, yeah, but yeah, but the, the actual job was great because you, you joined the ship at about eight o'clock. You knew you were going to do three there and back trips in a, in a day shift. Mm. Um, I used to work either on the information desk or in the what, what was then the duty free shop. And yeah, happy people are going on holiday generally. It's only an hour and a quarter crossing, so it wasn't particularly mm. onerous. Um, yeah, we had great fun. Good fun. I, mm. I can still, I, I did them so many times, I can still remember all the announcements that you have to do. When you press about bing bong, ladies and gentlemen, that kind of thing. Yeah. Did you press press bing bong as well? Uh, <laughs> no, the, the button did the bing bong for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, and then you have to do it in French, that's obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome yeah. stuff. Um, thank you very much, Hannah, for sharing your life and times and some insights and uh, some wonderful CPD. And to all our listeners and viewers, if you've enjoyed what you've heard, don't forget to get in touch drop us a line and don't forget to subscribe because it does help it does it does both our listeners welcome some company yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> if a couple more of you subscribe as well then that that would be great as well so so i think leaves us for no for no further along the line or whatever what, I, what am i saying i'll have another drink hang on a minute <laughs> Hannah it Perry. leaves us with a sad task of saying goodbye and oh. thank you Thank Fine, you very thank much you. for having me. <laughs> and may your dog go with you. And with may you. your dog be with you. <laughs> Cheers. And cut. There. Yeah. Awesome. Oh. How was that? Fantastic.
fab. Did yeah, you enjoy yourself? No, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent <laughs> stuff. That's brilliant, Anna. Thank you cool. very much indeed. Awesome. Really Thanks ever so much for having me. Brilliant. All right. All right. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.